Ivy entered the building unsure of what awaited within those walls. The darkness isolated the girl, yet she remained uneasy at the presence of something just out of sight. There was no one else inside. There was nothing else inside. She steeled herself and continued on, but the sensation would not subside. Ivy had convinced herself, despite her best efforts, that there was something else in there with her. There was something else in there with her. Slowly ascending, she became hyper-aware of her footsteps as they echoed off the dark walls. Footsteps echoed off the dark walls. There was a growl from within the building, perhaps of some old pipes or the setting of the structure. To Ivy, it was much more sinister. She froze. The echoes of her footsteps ceased. Hello? Ivy spoke into the air, not entirely sure if she should anticipate a response or not. Not entirely sure if she wanted a response or not. Hello? It echoed. A song never heard and never sung. He asked me, are you the one? A story never writ and never read. I know not what you mean, I said. A sight that can be seen no more. Are you the one that I've been looking for? A closed door seen from another view. There is no one here for you. Somewhere beneath that old gray building. For a moment there was silence, though it was fleeting. There's a grave with no body to be found, interrupted by a cavalcade of sound. The knife in Johnny's hand glistened bright, the sharp, smooth edge reflecting the dim lights of the grimy brown kitchen. The shining steel stood out within that place, only accompanied in its pristine nature by an assortment of cutlery laid out upon the table beside the unprepared meal. Johnny stared longingly at his instrument for a moment, seemingly loath to sully its clean metal. When he finally began moving his arms, each motion was swift and articulate. He sliced into the flesh with surgeon-esque precision. Blood rushed to meet the blade and trickled down the side of the slab of meat, dripping off the table and onto the floor, leaving a stain of crimson red juice. The tenderness of the thigh was unquestionable, thick with just the right balance of muscle and fat. Johnny took hold to keep it from sliding around on the cutting board. Licking the blood off his fingers, he returned to his work. There was something caring about the way in which he treated his actions, not unlike a respect for the creature he was taking from to create such a fine dish. This fondness did not overcome Johnny's sense of purpose, however, as he sliced dutifully through the entire thigh. It took some time, but eventually all the fat, muscles, 
tendons, ligaments, and bones had been sliced, severed, or even chopped through. Johnny thought about what a quality dish this subject would make. Drill, whirring, saw, buzzing, pain, searing, my head is a flame, burning to ash. Ear, blowing, bird, chirping, light, glowing, machine exists from beneath the film roller. Pacing, drill, closing, close, pacing, film. Black, shrouded, eyes, clouded, stuck, rooted, unable to move, he slowly nears. Air, frozen, birds, silent. Now I see the face, realizing it's pale and bruised, thus swollen, rot, bastard, me. I'm at the foot of a concrete staircase. I look round, but it seems I have no other option. My descent starts. The stairs leading down loom large. The exit lies ahead. I could go now. It could be over. I take a step. Walking down, one after another, into the deep, dark. Concrete walls, concrete floors, concrete stairs. And another. It's not all dark, though. There's a light coming from somewhere. My pace is steady. There's not even any dust for the light to cast onto. Just concrete slabs. My breath uneven. The stairs are steep, seemingly endless. Each step forward only moves me further back. It calls to me. I know I could just go through the door at the end. I wouldn't have to watch her disappear again. Can't breathe at all. I can see now, though. The door is closed. It's always been closed, and so it will remain. I've got no choice. I'm still walking down the stairs. I should have no reason, but I keep going. Always the same. Down I go, without a clue as to why. No reason and no rhyme, but there's still that light. It's always been. Down one more step and I've reached the bottom, but there was nowhere to go, so I turned to the right. Second nature. The light came from a door on the right, and I pressed through, but I was not bathed in its glow. And third nature. The night left me entirely, and I became a shadow of a man, a monster, stumbling through the blinding white. 
etc. I can see now that the door is open. It was never opened. It was always open, and so it will remain always the same. It's only then that I understand, too late, I suppose. This never-ending nightmare has already restarted. Echoes remain. I'm at the foot of a concrete staircase. I look round, but it seems I have no other option. My descent starts.